This dark spot in the sky is a common problem when shooting landscape photos using a wide angle lens and a polarizing filter. Let me show you how we can fix that in Lightroom Classic. As always, feel free to follow along by downloading the RAW file from the link in the description of this video. And now, let's begin. So, here we have opened up the RAW file, and you can clearly see a very dark area of the sky right above the mountain. This is caused by a polarizing filter because a polarizing filter affects different areas of the sky differently. So, we end up with darker and brighter parts. If you just want to see how I fix that, check the chapters of the videos. First, however, I want to do the basic adjustments for this shot. So, I'm going to change the profile to Adobe Standard just to lessen the contrast a little bit. And what I want to do with the exposure is I want to bring down the highlights slightly. And at the same time, I'm going to bring up the shadows. By doing this, we are getting some more details in the darkest parts. And I also want to bring up the whites, adding a little more contrast to the scene. And while we add it, let's bring down the blacks. And again, just add more contrast this way. Exposure wise, I think we are quite good for now. What I want to do as well is to bring up the texture, making this shot look a little bit sharper. At the same time, I'm going to bring down the clarity quite a bit, which kind of helps to set up some kind of autumn glow effect, which I like for mountain scenes like this with some light coming in. We can also bring down the dehaze for the same effect. This also will make the image brighter, so look out and especially take a closer look at the histogram if you're playing around with negative dehaze. Plus, I also want to make this shot a little more vibrant, so let's raise the vibrance. And I think we're done with the basic adjustments. I'm quite happy with it, but still, this dark spot in the sky is very, very obvious once you see it, so let's try to fix that. And as always, with problems which just occur in specific areas, we want to fix that using masks. So we want to go ahead, open up the masking panel. And here we want to set up a very, very specific mask. So as I said earlier, using a polarizing filter will have a different effect on different parts of the sky. Right here, we have a very dark spot and the sky gets brighter as we move more towards the left side of the image. We have a bunch of different options. What I like to do is I like working with very dark skies in my landscape images. However, I first want to show you a different approach. Instead of making the rest of the sky darker without affecting the dark spot, we want to make that dark blob brighter. So it's not as noticeable as before. We are going to click on the range masks and we are going to select the color range. With the color range, we want to look for the darkest spot in the sky and let's just click in here. At first, this will select way more than we need. So we want to make use of that refine slider and bring it down. And as I bring it down, you can see how we can nicely target that very, very dark spot of the sky. At the moment, there is still a little bit of landscape selected, but again, that's not a big deal. What we want to do is to click on the mask, click on those three dots, choose intersect mask width and choose sky. So with this mask set up, we have a pretty good selection for this dark blob. And all we need to do now is to just bring up the exposure. And it's very, very important to only use very tiny amounts. Otherwise, it's very noticeable right away. So maybe something like this. And you can see with just that one mask, we have fixed that dark polarized area in the sky. I think this looks quite nice. But as I said, I personally, I'm not a big fan of those bright skies for my landscape scenes, so I want to do it differently. So instead of selecting the dark part of the sky, I'm going to select the rest of the image. For that, I'm going to click on our color range mask with which we have selected the dark part of the sky. And then I'm going to invert that mask. Let me activate the overlay. And now you can see we have selected everything except for that dark blob. We want to make use of the refine slider once more, so we don't accidentally make the dark blob darker. But I think something like this looks pretty nice. So what I want to do with this mask is instead of bringing up the exposure, I'm going to bring down the exposure, bringing the brighter sky more in line with the darker part of the sky. So let's bring down the exposure. Right about here looks very, very good. And again, we got rid of this ugly polarizing effect using just a simple mask. 
And that's pretty much it for this Lightroom tutorial. Of course I'm going to finish this edit, so feel free to stay. What I don't like about the sky now is I'm losing all that brightness that's going on in this area. So I'm going to click on the mask once more and I'm going to say subtract and let's choose a linear gradient. And I'm going to drag this up like this and in turn we are getting back the brightness in this area of the sky. Wonderful. I actually do think I want to make it even brighter. So let's create another sky mask and I'm going to subtract a linear gradient going down from the top, just targeting the area on the left side. And in here I'm going to bring up the highlights. And I'm going to apply another mask for the sky. This time I'm using a linear gradient targeting the right side. So again, we only want to target the sky, not the mountain. So we're going to click on those three dots, intersect mask with and choose select sky. And with that mask, I'm going to bring down the exposure just to darken the sky some more. I know this is quite a heavy effect, but I really love how this looks. So I'm happy with the top part for now. What I want to do next is to add a little bit of glow. So let's add a radial gradient and I'm going to make it nice and big like this. I'm going to tilt it slightly and I'm going to place the center outside the image. And with this radial gradient, I'm making sure to overlap the landscape in the foreground and then just bring up the blacks, introducing a little glow effect like that. Wonderful. We can make it stronger by using another second radial gradient. This time I'm making it a little smaller to get a more natural effect. Again, I'm slightly tilting it and I'm overlapping those mountains in the back. And what I want to do in here is to not raise the blacks, but instead I'm going to use negative dehaze for a stronger glow effect. Just like this. Wonderful. Now I'm really happy with the sky. I just want to adjust the foreground a little more. So let's create a linear gradient covering the foreground like this. And what I want to do in here is to just add a little more punch by bringing up the contrast. And that's about it for the masking. At this point the exposure looks very nice, but we can work on the colors a little more. So let's head out of the basic tab and let's open up the color mixer. I want to play around with the saturation a bit and the most common colors for this scene are the warmer tones, orange and yellow, and of course the blue sky. So I want to push those. Let's bring up orange. Let's also raise the yellow tones. And maybe let's also raise the blue tones just a little bit to make this image very, very vibrant. If you want, you can also play around with the luminance tab, kind of applying a little bit of dodging to the landscape in the foreground by bringing up the yellow luminance. I think it's not looking good for this image, so I'm not going to apply any of that. Instead, I want to go right into the color grading panel for some split toning. And here I just want to work on the highlights, apply a very warm hue somewhere in the yellow range, just to improve that golden hour look some more. Of course, we also want to bring up the saturation to have an effect of the split toning. So I'm going to just use a tiny amount of it here. That should be enough. Okay. I also forgot to activate the lens corrections. So here I just want to go into the lens correction panel and activate remove chromatic aberration. I'm not enabling the profile correction since I don't like the look of it for this scene. So let's not turn it on. I also do want to go into the calibration tab and just play around with the blue primary hue and saturation. What this means is I'm going to slightly drop the blue primary hue while raising the saturation some more. Wonderful. And finally, we can sharpen this image in the details tab. So I'm going to bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking, and then let's bring up the amount of sharpening and we are done. Actually, one more thing I want to change. I want to work on the white balance since I do think this scene looks kind of cold. So what I want to do with the white balance is to just raise the temperature a little bit, introducing more of that golden hour light. And with that, finish the editing for this scene. So this looks great. I'm happy with this image. I hope this was something useful for you. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. And so far, thank you for watching this video.